Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official study manual for T's 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need that. Always make sure this book is in front of you while you're doing the work. Today, what we're going to do is the continue, continuation of the, of the problems that we encountered on page number 132. On page number 132, the book gives us five problems. We did those five problems the day before yesterday. And yesterday we did five bonus problems that I, that I had given you for homework the day before. Uh, and we did those yesterday. And yesterday I gave you five more problems, the last batch of five problems. So in, in other words, altogether there are ten bonus problems, six through ten, they are right here. And I ask you to do these problems ahead of time. Hopefully you have done ahead of time, but if you have not, I'm going to get out of the way right now. I want you to pause the video and do the problems yourself. I'm going to give you an unobstructed view. Here are the five problems. It says convert 35% into fraction and decimal. Convert 319% into fraction and decimal. Convert 0.681 into percentage and fraction. Convert 0 0.035 into fraction and convert 71 over 250 into decimal. Right, let's get going, shall we? So we're going to convert 35% into fraction and decimal. 35, 35%. What does the word percent mean? Percent means out of 100. We talked about it many, many times. Percent means out of 100. So how do we write 35% in a fraction? It's simply 35 out of 100. That's what percent means. So that's it. We converted this into fraction. We can leave it like this. If that's how the answer is presented to you in the exam. Or if the answer is presented in a reduced form, if none of the answer choices match this form, then you know you have to reduce it. So we have to go one more round. Do you find any common factor between 35 and 100? The answer is yes. 35 and 100 share a common factor of 5. And if you don't like to deal with 100, if you, don't find, if you find 100 to be a pain, write that 100 as 10 times 10. Makes life easier. 10 times 10 is still 100. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 35 has 7 fives. 7 fives are 35. 7, 7 fives are 35. And 10 has 2 fives. So there we go, we're done. So on the top we end up with 7, and the bottom we end up with 10 times 2, which is 20. There we go. We just converted 35% into fraction, which is 35 over 20. Now we have to convert 35% to decimal. 35% if you want to convert that into decimal, what do we do? We simply write our 35. We look at the, we look at the, well actually what it is is, if you want to convert 35% of decimal, let me go through the entire process, is 35% is same as 35 over 100, just like it is here, 35 over 100. Except instead of reducing it, because we don't want to convert it into final form of fraction, we want to convert this into decimal, Divide 35 into 35 by 100. We take our 35. We look at the decimal point, which is right here, which is right here, and move it two space to the left. It ends up here. In other words, 35 over 100 is simply 0 0.35. There we go. That was number six. Number seven was three hundred and nineteen percent into fraction. Voila. That's very easy. Three hundred and nineteen percent of the fraction, three hundred and nineteen percent means out of one hundred. And that's it, we're done. That's the fraction. It cannot be reduced any any further. There are no common factors between 319 and 100. That's it. That's, that's in fraction. 
Now, if they ask us to convert this into decimal, if they ask us to convert this 319% into decimal, then we have to go one more step. We have to divide 319 by 100. So we write out 319. We look at the decimal point, which is right here. Right here. And we pick it up. And since we're dividing it by 100, which has two zeros, we move it two spots to the left, right here. And therefore, 319, 319%. 319% when, exp when expressed as a decimal it is 3.19 voila that was number 7 just to number 8 number 8 says convert 0 0.681 into percent and that's and fraction let's do this shall we 0 0.681 if you want to convert into percent it's very easy whenever you have to convert from decimal to percent you just multiply it by 100 and it's a very easy trick just think of something very simple we know 0 0.25 we know 0 0.25, which is one quarter, and everybody knows that one quarter is 25%. So the question is, how do we go from a decimal to a percentage? It's very simple. Multiply this quantity that you see here by 100. And when we do that, we move the decimal two spots to the right. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to multiply it by 100. So we bring a pick up our decimal and move it two spots to the right. One, two is going to right, end up right here. In other words, 0 0.621 when expressed as a percentage is 68, 68.1%. Voila. That's all. If you want to express that as a, as a fraction, that's a different story. Let's start again. If you want to express that as a fraction, well, we can write this as, as like this. It is a fraction. But in a fraction, both the top number and the bottom number have to be whole number. Top number, as you can see, is not a whole number, it's a decimal. How do we convert that into a whole number? Well, we see three, we see three places after decimal. One, two, three. We see three places. Why don't we multiply the top and the bottom by 1,000? Let's multiply top and the bottom by 1,000, and that should do the trick. So, 0.681 times 1000, we pick up our decimal, 0.681 times 1000, we pick up our decimal and move it to the right. How many places? One, two, three places. One, two, three, right here. It's going to end up, decimal is going to end up right here. In other words, 0.681 times 1000 is simply 681. And at the bottom we have 1 times 1000, which is just 1000. There you go, we just did it. 0.681 written in a percentage form is 68.1%. Written in a fraction form is this. That's all. That was number 8. Number 9. The penultimate problem. The An ultimate problem. As I told you before, if you want to work on your vocabulary, as I told you before in the previous video, you will find on my channel some vocabulary videos. Just type in T's vocabulary words. T's vocabulary words. Day one, and the series will begin. And somewhere in the series, we covered this video, this word, penultimate, which is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. We are on number nine. I'm only going to do ten. We are on second to the last problem, we are on a penultimate problem. And this convert 0 0.035 into fraction. Let's do that, shall we? So 0 0.035 has three decimal places, one, two, three. If you want to convert this to whole number, we need to multiply that by 1000. If we're going to multiply the top by 1000, 
we must do the same thing to the bottom. And if it makes it easier to see it like this, you can do that. You can put a one underneath to make it easy. So now 0 0.035 times a thousand, we're going to move the decimal three spaces, one, two, three. It's going to become 35. Point, point zero three five times a thousand is 35. And one times thousand is one thousand. Again, it's up to you. You can leave it like this. You can leave it like this. If that's how it that's how the answer is given to us. And if not, if it's formed, if it's presented to us in the answer choices in the reduced form, then we need to go one more step. And the one more step is to find some common factor between 35 and 100, 1000. See, I just now I said 100 because it's easier. Let's write our let's write our 1000 as 100 times 10. So I find it easier to deal with. Do you understand? 1000 is too scary because it's easy to divide something by. See, the common factor is five, so it's much easier to divide 10 by five than to try to divide one than to try dividing 1000 by five. Let's divide top and bottom by five. 35 is made up of seven fives and 10 is made up of two fives. Voila. So we end up with seven on the top. 100 times two is 200. There we go. In other words, in other words, 0 0.035 as a fraction, 0 0.035 when written in a fraction form equals seven over 200, which of course is same as 35 over 100. Now that does not look right at all to me. Something has gone drastically wrong. Because these two are not equivalent. If this is 100 and this is 200, thirty-five over a hundred, five seven. I don't know, maybe it is correct. 35 has 7 fives, 10 has 2 fives, 100 times 2 is 200, 7 over 200. No, that is not correct. Something has gone wrong. Oh, I know what went wrong because the original figure was not 35 over 100. I missed that 10. The original figure was 35 over 100 times 10. It was 35 over 1000. Now it makes sense. There we go. In other words, 0 0.035 written in a fraction form is equal to 7 over 200 or 35 over 1000. That, that makes perfect sense now because if you multiply, if you take this quantity, this fraction, 7 over 200, and multiply top and bottom by 5, 7 times 5 is 35 and 200 times 5 is 1000. There we go. What number was this one? That was number nine. Let's do the very last one. It says convert 71 over 250 into decimal. And we have talked about it many, many times that whenever we are asked to convert a fraction into a decimal. Listen carefully. Whenever we ask to convert a fraction into a decimal, it's always easier to divide any number on the top, any quantity on the top, doesn't matter what it is, any quantity on the top that you can throw, you can divide any quantity on the top by 10 in the bottom or 100 or 1000 or 10,000, any multiple of 10, any multiple of 10. So if you can convert the bottom part into some multiple of 10, then it doesn't matter what's on the top, you can divide it by just moving the decimal places. We have 250. We don't have a. We uh, we don't have 10. We are far beyond 10. We are far beyond 100. So, 10, 100. The next one is 1,000. One with the three zeros. Can we convert 250 into 1,000? The answer is yes. By divide by multiplying rather, both top and bottom by four, because four times 250 is 1,000. And 71 times four, 70 times four is 280. Well, let's, let's do it now. 71 times 4. Seven, 70 times 4 is 280. So another 4 will be 284. Let's do it out. 
4 right here and 7 times, there you go, you see, 284 of course, 284 over 1000. And there is your answer. We were asked to convert, we were asked to convert 71 over 250 into, oh, decimal. Oh, we have, we have not finished it. So, if, if they ask us to convert this into decimal, so that's the first step, we converted this bottom part, we converted bottom part into 1000, now we need to divide the top by 1000, which is very easy. Here's, here's 284. Where's the decimal? The decimal is right here. Decimal is right here. Pick it up and move it to the left. How many places? One, two, three. Three places. Let's do that. Pick it up and move it three places. One, two, three. Voila. It ends up right here. You have to put a, you have to put a leading zero. You have to put a leading zero here before the decimal. In other words, it is 0 0.284. This quantity that you see there is 0 0.284, which is same as this quantity. In other words, in other words, 71 divided by 250, when converted into decimal, when converted into decimal, equals 0 0.284. One. Why does it say number nine? It should say number ten. Well, that was the end of that topic. The reason we spent so much time on it, five videos, five days on it, is because it's a very important topic, not just for the exam, not just for the exam, but in real life, and the life as a whole, to be able to convert simple quantities from decimal to fraction to percentage and back and forth. You should be able to convert one from the other, one into other two format very easily. There are three formats. Right? Something can be expressed as a percentage, or as a decimal, or as a fraction. And we have to be able to go back and forth. Which is why I gave you the 10 bonus problems. We'll meet tomorrow, where we'll start a new chapter, a new topic, which has to do with order of operation. On page number 135, you see order of operations, chapter number 21, which deals with what is known as PAMDAS. I'm sure you've heard of it, and we'll work on that topic tomorrow. If you wish to get hold of me, you can very easily get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? Bye now.